Listen to this illustrative story, which will have a number of spiritual applications and points to it. There was a woman who lived with her husband down at the beach, a very lonely stretch of beach in a cove far away from the town and villages. She lived with her husband there because he was a scientist. And his work required him to live with his wife in this isolated cottage along the sea, seashore because he had scientific work that he had to do in that particular location. And it was a very lonely and desolate place, foggy, dark, with the waves lashing below the cabin furiously in the fog. So his work required him to leave for several days, every so often, to go out in his boat and take care of his scientific investigations to ch check the animal and plant life and to make his notes and his scientific records to be later brought back to the laboratories where they'd be studied for practical use. So he would go away every once in a while and she being a young lady and her first time away from home and family, whenever he had to leave for several days, she stayed home scared. And it was especially terrifying at night. There she was all alone in a little cottage. No one nearby at all. No one to talk to, no telephone. And so her mind went into imagination, as your mind does. Went to fearful imagination and she wondered uh, if she was in danger. And she remembered stories she had read about pirates, fierce pirates and smugglers, and fierce creatures that came out of the fog to terrify. All the science fiction stories she had read revived themselves in her mind. And so in this state of fear, she would stay alone in the cottage. And after their being there about three or four months, something especially frightening happened to, happened to her. One night, late at night, she was all alone there. She heard strange sounds coming from out of the fog. She could hear it above the lashing of the waves and above the wind itself. Something very weird, unknown, uncertain. And of course, with all this background of building up her imagination, she thought it might be some kind of a mysterious monster out there, something that would be threatening to her. So she did what all human beings in that situation would do. She shook and didn't know what to do about it. There she was, feeling trapped by this unknown menace, this sound, whatever it was, this haunting sound almost half like a voice, half like the sea. She didn't know what it was. She couldn't identify it. Have you ever noticed, by the way, that your fears are more fearful when you can't understand them? You don't know the identity, where they're coming from. You always figure if you could take the hood off of the menace and understand it, that it would go away. But you don't know how to do that. You don't know how to approach it. Now. She was also afraid to tell her husband about this because he came back and she didn't want to tell him her experience. She was ashamed to admit that she'd been scared all this time that he was gone. So she said nothing. And so her fear of him leaving again, quite naturally, built up, didn't it? And he would say, well, uh, dear, I have to go again for another five days. I'll be leaving tomorrow morning. Already she would start to tremble because she, she was afraid that that same haunting voice, whatever it was, sound, whatever it was, would come back to frighten her again. So he went away and the voice came back time and time again over the next several months until, ladies and gentlemen, she 
became what you must become, afraid but not wanting to be afraid anymore. So she knew the one thing she had to do was to tell her husband about it, explain it to him, which she did, finally did, and he smiled a little bit and he said, oh, shall I explain it to you? And she said, please do, what caused that horrible sound that frightened me so much? He said, well, look, he went out and investigated, of course, and went back and he said, look, you see, when I remove my boat, when I leave, that permits the wind to come through to the cabin, through the trees out there, and that is what you heard, merely the wind and the waves, all the wind coming through to the cabin before it was blocked by the boat. That's why you never heard it any time while I was here. But when the boat was removed, the wind came freely through. All you heard was a very peculiar arrangement of nature, and that was all there was to it. Of course, she was relieved. Do you understand, at the, as the first point of this, that you're very foolish? You're a very foolish man. You're a very foolish woman to continue to endure what need not be endured because the explanation is available. She was a very foolish young woman for a long time, wasn't she? She endured what she didn't have to endure. She suffered when she didn't have to suffer at all. You're suffering, you know you are. You're suffering from things that you don't want to see because Listen to this. You're afraid that there isn't an answer. Aren't you, aren't you tired of the terror of the next day? No, afraid you're not. You're just going to get up and have a temporary feeling of relief while something is there. Her husband is there, and that kept her temporarily satisfied, feeling safe. She felt safe while he was there, all the time unconsciously inside. She was worried. It, it is just, look, just his words, dear. I'm going for the next few days, and the terror mounted again. What news event can start you off again? What word from another person can start you being concerned? Here it comes again, that horrible thing out of the fog, whatever it is, and it's going to scare me again. What is it? Some business you have to take care of, some challenge that comes up, some difficulty that you're in. And I might tell you right now, there are no difficulties outside you at all. You, inwardly, are the only difficulty that you have. And if you've, if you've heard that before, please hear it now in a new way to understand that there's nothing out there that can scare you. There are no haunting voices out there. It leaves you with just one thing left. And if you, if you knew the beauty of what's left, well, you don't know it now. What's left? is leaving yourself in back of yourself and finding something higher than you. Think of the phrase, release. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about you voluntarily, happily, cheerfully, joyfully releasing yourself that old nature that peeks out the window and says, maybe I can understand it. You can't, you never have, and you never will. I'll guarantee you that. Think of another interesting word. I'm sure you'll react to this one because of your past experiences. Think of the word inheritance. If you release yourself, then there's room for something new. There's, there's room for an inheritance. But listen, 
spiritual inheritance by which you, you get something new to think from, to feel with. This spiritual in inheritance is something that is now unknown to you, and that is what makes you so reluctant to invite it. See, the purpose of these teachings, of these classes, is to get you to the point where, where you're trapped. And you permit the trap to, to trap you entirely so there's no escape, no, no more lying. Don't you have some idea of what your lies have been doing to you? What they're doing, what they did to you today? Why go in the past? Why not today? But you're not very aware of how many times you deceived yourself, are you? So think of of something being inherited that is outside of you. We said it has to come to you. And it's an inheritance, but it's not familiar. You can't grab it and use it because you've never taken it before. If you're following all this, I wonder if you, if you begin to understand how profound this is, what we're talking about. That there's something that you've never known before, a solution that you've never found before, that is coming from the outside, that is coming to you, and when you, it comes to you, and you accept it, and you want it for yourself, you take a, a deep sigh. Why are you abiding? Why are you putting up with the threats that you perceive to be outside you? You must fall out of love. Never mind falling in love. You don't know what love is. All you want is a thrill and excitement or someone to flatter you. You must fall out, out of love with something. If, by the way, if you want to know what real love is, Shall I tell you what you must fall out of love with? Well, this isn't going to go very easy on you. You're going to have to fall out of love with yourself. Well, where, where was the threat? Outside in the fog? No, that was her imagination. The threat, the menace was in her own system, wasn't it? In her own mind, in her own, own emotions. Can you imagine the relief of that young woman when her husband finally said, there's no threat at all. You simply have misunderstood the whole thing. And he explained to her, she understood, and oh, the sigh of relief that she had. I tell you that you can do the same thing. You can sigh with great relief and be of all your burdens.